Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintouts.com. Today we're going to be doing another Ethereum related tutorial, and specifically we're going to be talking about ERC20 standard tokens. So first, let's discuss the difference between a token and a coin. A coin, like Litecoin or Bitcoin, is a cryptocurrency that runs on its own specific network of nodes running the shared uh, software. So for example, Litecoin was forked off of Bitcoin sort of in the early days of cryptocurrency, but it uses its own network of nodes running the Litecoin software uh, to create this decentralized currency. However, a token is a currency that's built on top of another currency's blockchain. So for example, one of the most popular blockchains to build new currencies or tokens on top of is the Ethereum blockchain, because Ethereum is really a distributed computing platform that allows these smart contracts to run on it. In the early days of Ethereum, lots of people were creating tokens, but each one had to be interacted with by wallets in a different way. So the ERC, or Ethereum Request for Comments, number 20, introduced a new standard that makes the token API more consistent. So what are the sort of functions and events that ERC20 token smart contracts use? Well, we have a couple of functions. Starting with total supply, we have balance of, allowance, transfer, transfer from, and approve. As well, the standard defines two different types of events that can be emitted by smart contract functions. These are approval and transfer. So when we initialize a new token on the Ethereum network, there are two different sort of ways you can have to uh, generate the supply of tokens. You might have a mining based token that could be pegged to uh, Ethereum blocks being found on the network, also rewarding those miners with this token. But the simplest and most common way to introduce tokens to the network is to use a fixed supply contract. So when a new token contract is added to the network, the uh, token creator creates a smart contract transaction and they are given all of the fixed supply to start with. There are two different types of sort of metadata functions that can be called on this smart contract by creating a transaction and including in the data field a uh, Ethereum bytecode call to these particular functions we can get the total supply of the tokens, so that's the total amount of tokens that are available, and you can also request the balance of a specific address. Now, with most tokens on the Ethereum network, the addresses are the same as the Ethereum addresses, so that keeps things simple and consistent. Now, there are two different types of transfers that can occur with ERC-20 standard tokens. Remember that with most uh, fixed supply contracts, the contract address, so the original creator of the contract, uh, owns the initial amount of tokens. So there is a simple transfer function where the contract address can send some amount of tokens to the recipient address. And this sort of behaves like a typical cryptocurrency transaction that's a push transaction. So the address that uh, is the rightful owner of some amount of tokens sends those tokens to another address by signing and creating a transaction that does so. Now with these tokens, there's sort of a more interesting thing that can occur, which is a withdrawal type of transaction, more similar to a credit card, debit card, or traditional bank transfer. So another contract can make a request to have the uh, approval done by the smart contract owner. So the smart contract owner will call the approve function and allow this new other contract address to receive some certain amount of tokens in a withdrawal. So once the approval function is called, uh, the new recipient address, often called the spender, can call the allowance function on the smart contract. 
This allowance uh, shows how many tokens a certain address is allowed to withdraw from the original contract address. So this again behaves more like a pull transaction rather than a traditional cryptocurrency push transaction. It's much like giving somebody permission uh, to withdraw a certain amount from your credit card every month to pay a utility bill, for example. Now there are two types of events that can be emitted by these smart contract functions. And what that allows is it allows other smart contracts on the Ethereum network to react to these events occurring and do something else interesting that they want to do. There is an approval event that is done when a uh, new spending address is given an allowance to withdraw a certain amount of tokens. And there is a transfer event that occurs when some transfer of tokens occurs uh, on this smart contract. And so if there's another contract out there that, for example, wants to initiate a withdrawal once it receives approval, that contract can listen for the approval event to be emitted by the original uh, token contract on the Ethereum network. So this has been a look at how ERC-20 standard tokens work from a technical perspective, uh, but it's a pretty high level overview of how these tokens work. I think that there's you know, a lot going on when it comes to understanding Ethereum smart contracts and how this sort of code executes on this decentralized network, but I think that understanding standard tokens is a good place to start. Because at a high level, when you look at these functions and events, I think they're fairly intuitive to understand. As always, there is a written article on the Chain Tutorials website that accompanies this video tutorial. And as always, thank you very much for listening.